Good evening and welcome to this regular meeting of the Council of the Municipality of North Perth. Our meeting date is Monday, March 13th, 2023. I'm Mayor Todd Kaysenberg and I'll call this meeting to order. I ask the clerk to note the starting time for our minutes as 7 p.m. A warm welcome is extended to councillors, staff and delegations. I don't think we have any actually, we have staff tonight. Uh, who will participate in this meeting, regardless of uh, whether being physically in attendance in the council chamber and list will, or being connected through web technologies. We begin tonight's meeting with the playing of O Canada. Those in chambers as able are invited to stand. that we are on the traditional land of the Anishinaabe peoples. We wish to recognize the long history of Indigenous peoples in Canada and show our respect to them today. We recognize their stewardship of the land. May we all live with respect on this land and live in peace and friendship. Tonight's meeting is being streamed live on the Municipality of North Perth YouTube channel and will be available there after this meeting as an archived video. To those viewing this meeting via the YouTube channel, a warm welcome to you. To those present in the gallery today by attending a public meeting of the Council, you are consenting to your image, voice and comments being recorded. Anyone who is invited to speak will be recorded and their voice, image, and comments will form part of the live stream. The chair and or the clerk have the discretion and authority at any time to direct the termination or interruption of live streaming. Such direction will only be given in exceptional circumstances when deemed relevant. Circumstances may include instances where the content of debate is considered misleading, defamatory, or potentially inappropriate to be published. Attendees are advised that they may be subject to legal action if their actions result in inappropriate and or unacceptable behavior and or comments. Thank you. And now that I've been ominous for a bit, let's move forward to more interesting stuff. At this time, I invite your decorum over the course of the coming meeting. I note to Council that um, Councillor Rothwell is vacationing this evening, but has requested the consent of Council to participate in this meeting remotely. This matter, of course, is solely at the discretion of this body. Council, what do you say? Would you consider a resolution to allow Councillor Rothwell to participate remotely? I see Councillor Richardson uh, waving his hand yes, so we'll call that uh, a move by Councillor Richardson for a resolution as the clerk sees fit. Uh, Deputy Mayor Callum will second this. Any discussion or debate? Seeing none, let's have that vote. I'm in favor 
Mayor Kaysenberg, my vote has not shown up. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Anstead. And with that, uh, we have uh, unanimous consent of Council present in the chambers to allow Councillor Rothwell to participate. Uh, therefore, let's bring Councillor Rothwell in. Welcome, Councillor Rothwell, as well. Thank you, Mayor Todd and Council. There we go. All right. Thank you. Okay. Um, let's move then to item 2.1 of our agenda pertaining to pecuniary interest. For the benefit of those unfamiliar with our council practices, provincial legislation requires councillors with a potential pecuniary or financial interest in any item at the council table to declare this interest and to remove her or himself from discussions and voting on the item. In accordance with recommended protocol at this time, I invite all councillors with a perceived pecuniary interest, including those who have declared in writing to verbally advise the chair in public session and to submit documentation to this effect in writing to the clerk. Councillors are further reminded that should a potential conflict arise during the meeting, they may so declare and act at any point in the meeting. Do we have anyone this evening wishing to make a declaration of pecuniary interest? I am not seeing any. So let's move on to the gentle instructions. All participants are invited to speak when called upon by yours truly serving as chair. Those participating remotely who wish to speak may draw the attention of the clerk through our conferencing technologies chat function. Remote participants are asked to generally maintain a mute state in the web conference until I recognize your right to the floor. If when I do so recognize I don't hear you because you are muted or having some technical difficulty, I will advise. Let us now focus on the people's business. I invite those in the chamber to silence and put away their phones. Regarding item 2.2 of our agenda, I have a motion before me for the adoption of the agenda for tonight's meeting that reads, if I can pull it out, as follows. That the agenda for tonight's meeting be approved. Can I call for a move? Councillor Norton, thank you. And seconded by Councillor Blazek, thank you. Any discussion or debate on this item? Councillor Johnston is gently... No, we're on the agenda. You're ahead of us. <laughs> good, good, good. All right. Um, so we have that duly moved and seconded. Any any discussion or debate on this one? Seeing none, let's have that vote. I'm in favor again. I'm still having e scribe issues. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Anstead. Uh, so that is carried with that uh, that manually recorded vote. Uh, let's move next then to our consent agenda. Um, these items are placed on council's agenda because they're believed to be non-contentious, yet they may require or warrant council's recognition and action. Uh, grouping them expedites our business. However, any councillor wishing to extract an item or items from the consent agenda for discussion, debate, and individual action may do so. It's a packed one tonight. There are 15 items on the consent agenda, including the minutes of our last regular council meeting. Uh, councillors, anything to extract here or corrections to be made to the minutes? Looks like Councillor Johnston wants in. Welcome tonight, Councillor Johnston. Thank you. So there's at least three of them, and, and I think it's a question for Chris, that deal with the school board elections. And usually we are acclaimed, but I think we've had a few elections. Does it cost us much to conduct that with our own election? Like, is it worth us asking for that compensation? Like, when they're acclaimed like this year, it wouldn't cost us hardly anything? Or is, it, is there still some staff time involved, is my question. Um, I think I'm going to direct that question to our clerk, uh, Lindsay Klein, who's with us remotely. Uh, Lindsay, could you uh, open your microphone for us and perhaps respond to that question? Certainly, through you, Mr. Mayor. Thanks for the question. Um, it, it, it definitely d d does still take staff time. Um, some of our, our school board districts are combined with other municipalities for, for like the... Um, French language, public and school board, and separate school boards. Um, and it, it depends on the number of candidates we get, as you mentioned, Councillor Johnson, whether they're acclaimed or not. Um, but it definitely still takes staff time and resources. We still have to put the names on the ballots. We still have to accept their nomination paperwork and, and do all that kind of administrative side of things. So, you know, it doesn't cost North Perth as much as the larger municipalities, but there definitely is still a 
still some, you know, time and financial resources that, that we spend on that. Thank you. Did you uh, wish to consider an action on this, uh, Councillor Johnston? Well, pulling them out and, and um, supporting these municipalities that are asking for compensation. Do you have the magic numbers of these ones just off the top I of I think it's there? 7, 11, and 15. 3.7, 3.11, and 3.15, I believe I'll deal with it. Okay. I think those are the only three. That's actually what I was searching for before because I knew there were several of them. Yeah, it could there. 3.4 as well. All right. I think 3.5. I don't know. There was quite a few of them. Okay. Well, we'll, we'll sort of take note yep. that there are multiple uh, letters that uh, have been generated by other municipal councils and that uh, we want to consider that. All right. Um, before we deal with disposing of that, um, any other uh, items on the consent agenda that uh, you'd like pulled, Council, to have a look at? Okay, I think with the consent of Council procedurally, um, Councillor Johnston, did you want to move that um, we uh, send a letter of support on behalf of the multiple letters that we received from <coughs> the governments pertaining yes, to I would, I would move that. election costs? All right, thank you. Can I call for a seconder? Councillor Andreessen will be your seconder on this one. Any discussion or debate? Seeing none, let's have a vote on that. I'm in favor. Thanks, Councillor Anstead. Uh, I am as well. There was quite a delayed software response this time. Something odd happened. So, Councillor Nordham, what say you? You're in favor? Okay. Thank you. And do we have all votes then accounted for? Thank you. So that's carried. Thank you. Um, all right. Then uh, let's consider the core resolution uh, that was uh, proposed to us, that consent items 3.1 to 3.15 be received for information in the minutes of the March 6th, 2023 regular council meeting be adopted. Can I call for more on this one? Councillor Duncan, thank you, and seconded by Councillor Andreessen. Any discussion or debate on that? Seeing none, let's have that vote. And that is showing as carried as well. Uh, thank you, Council. Um, at this time, it's proposed that we uh, move on to agenda item number four. Uh, we do not have any public meetings scheduled for t tonight's um, Council session, uh, nor have we uh, had any delegations reach out and ask for permission to, to address Council. That means we can move beyond four to item five, reports from departments and key staff. For item 5.1.1, North Perth CAO Chris Snell has brought forward a note that indicates he is interested in service on an external board and as part of the process for being considered wishes council's consent. I'll let the CAO speak to this request at this point. Mr. Snell, the floor is yours. Let me just get the microphone. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Back in late November, AMO was seeking... Um, qualified candidates for a number of various vacant positions. One of the vacant positions was um, small urban caucus, um, municipal employer staff position. So considering that we're at a critical time, um, I think in the provincial history, just with, with everything that's going on with the Planning Act and, and other provincial um, various regulation and legislative changes, I thought it was important that uh, North Perth have a voice at the table. So I did fill out the application to serve on the AMO board under the Small Urban Caucus. Um, but one of the last things that's standing is the, uh, the resolution from Council supporting my nomination if Council so chooses. Thank you. Thank you, CAO Snell. Any questions or first comments? Councillor Andreessen. Thank you through you, Mayor Kaysenberg. Um, I think that's awesome. Um, it would be great to have your representation at uh, AMO so yeah I hope it uh, I hope it works out thank you all right 
Thank you, Councillor Andreessen. Anyone else with first comments or questions about this matter? I'm not seeing any, so let's look at the resolution then. <clears throat> that the Council of the Municipality of North Perth supports the CAO appointment to the AMO Board of Directors Small Urban Caucus Municipal Employee. Uh, it sounds like Councillor Andreessen would be uh, chomping at the bit to, uh, to move that. Councillor Blazak will be our seconder. Any discussion or debate? Just as a question of protocol, it says support the CAO. Should we actually put your name in here? Like, is that... Uh, Right. Um, all right, let me just pen that in. All right, I think that's a little bit better. Um, any, anything further on this matter? Let's have that vote. And that is carried. And I'm going to say enthusiastically carried, Chris, because I think that this council is pretty thrilled with the opportunity to uh, have you as a candidate to serving at um, AMO. So best of luck. All right. Um, let's move on to item 5.2, which is reports from the strategic initiatives portfolio. Tonight we don't have any reports brought to the table by our manager of strategic initiatives. Uh, that means we can move to item 5.3. We do have one item here tonight from the Corporate Services Department. In item 5.3.1, staff is recommending that council delegate its authority to the clerk or deputy clerk for the issuance of letters of support for special occasion gaming events. These letters are requested by the Alcohol and Gaming Commission of Ontario for occasions typically put on by community groups that are appropriately vetted and when a lottery event is coupled as a secondary activity with a larger community event. Sometimes it seems a little convoluted. Let's call on the North Perth Clerk Lindsay Klein to uh, present this report to us and answer any questions. Welcome, Ms. Klein. Thank you, Mayor Kaysenberg. Through you to members of council. Um, as the mayor mentioned, we receive a handful of letter or a handful of requests from community organizations to provide them with letters of support as part of their application process to, uh, to the AGCO to obtain a special occasion gaming license. And these licenses are issued specifically by the AGCO to conduct a lottery event secondary to a larger social occasion or a larger special event. Um, so council may recall that earlier this year we did receive two requests, uh, one from the Kinsman Club of Listowel and one from the Atwood Lions Club. And typically these organizations do come to council every year with their requests. Um, so just to make our council meetings and our council agendas more efficient and to be able to respond to these requests in a timely manner, Staff are recommending that these requests are delegated to the clerk or deputy clerk to provide the letters of support. The AGCO does stipulate that these letters uh, must come from the municipality, but they don't necessarily require a resolution from council. And ultimately it is up to the AGCO to approve these applications for the special occasion gaming licenses. Um, it's just up to the municipality to provide that letter of support as part of the application process. So the recommendation before council is that the Council of the Municipality of North Perth delegates the authority to the clerk or deputy clerk to issue letters of support for special occasion gaming events as required by the Alcohol and Gaming Commission of Ontario. And I'd be happy to answer any questions. All right, thanks, Clerk Klein. Um, questions or first comments from council? Councillor Nordham. Uh, thanks for your report, uh, Lindsay. I'm um, just curious, uh, can we make it that uh, uh, new applicants uh, go through council and repeat would go to um, the clerk or the deputy clerk? Uh, through you, Mayor Kaysenberg, we could definitely consider that. Um, typically, organizations that, that make these kinds of requests, they would still... Um, there, there are organizations that we've seen in the municipality apply for lottery licenses. So there are organizations that are known um, in the municipality and they do have to meet certain criteria to obtain uh, 
a lottery license. Generally, they have to have some sort of charitable status. Um, but if it would make council more comfortable, we could change the resolution to be new applicants still have to come before council and repeat applicants um, are delegated to the clerk or deputy clerk. That's up to, that's at the will of council. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, any other questions or first comments? All right. I have a resolution then for consideration as follows that the council of the municipality of North Perth delegates the authority to the clerk or deputy clerk to issue letters of support for special occasion gaming events as required by the Alcohol and Gaming Commission of Ontario. Can I call for a mover? Councillor Richardson, thank you. And seconded by Councillor Andreessen. Any discussion or debate on this? Councillor Johnston. Just getting back to what Councillor Nordham said, I don't think we've ever turned one of these down. So would they, just a question for Lindsay then, would it be listed in our correspondence or... <coughs> that we would at least see, we wouldn't need to approve it, but would we at least see that it's gone through or would it just completely just go through you, Lindsay? Uh, through you, Mayor Kiesenberg, I think um, as part of the delegation of authority, we could advise council, you know, maybe on a yearly basis, just letting you know what organizations we've um, provided these letters to. I'm okay with that. Then it, but... it, that would happen yeah. after the fact, though. It, yeah. it wouldn't be like a heads up. It would be more so like a yearly summary kind of thing. I, and, and I don't think in my years we've ever said no to one of these. So I don't see it being an issue. Okay, thank you. Any other uh, discussion or debate on this one? Okay, just checking to see our remote people. You'll, you'll wave at me, right? Uh, okay. Um, all right, well, let's have that vote then. And that is carried. Thank you. Uh, thanks, uh, Ms. Klein. Uh, let's move forward then. Item 5.4, the Programs Department. We do not have reports this evening. Likewise, no report from the Facilities Department. That's 5.5. And further, no reports from the Environmental Services Department for item 5.6. That means we can move to item 5.7, reports from the Manager of Operations. And uh, that means we're getting into drain time, uh, colleagues. So we have four drains to consider tonight. Uh, I think the process is generally the same and reasonably understood by Council. Item 5.7.1 invites Council to proceed with the request for the improvement of the Mueller Municipal Drain under Section 78 of the Drainage Act and to appoint an engineer. Uh, the details are certainly in the report. Um, Mr. Uh, Scott Richardson is uh, our drainage superintendent. He's with us. Um, but I think he proposes generally to answer questions if there are questions from Council about the report. So, colleagues, any questions or comments about, uh, about the matter of the Mueller drain? Seeing none, then, uh, I have a resolution that the Council of the Municipality of North Perth, in accordance with Section 4 of the Drainage Act, proceeds with the petition for the Mueller Municipal Drain, and further that, the Council of the Municipality of North Perth appoints Spreet Associates to investigate the area and establish a watershed boundary and provide a new report. Can I call for a mover on this one? Councillor Duncan, thank you, and Councillor Nurem is our seconder. Any discussion or debate on this one? <coughs> Seeing none, let's have that vote. And that's carried. Uh, item 5.7.2 in a similar vein uh, invites council to proceed with the request for the improvement of the Mar Hill Municipal Drain under Section 78 of the Drainage Act and to appoint an engineer. Again, uh, Mr. Richardson is available to us if we have questions uh, at, about this matter or wish further comment from him. Uh, anyone in that state? Okay, not seeing any, so I have a resolution for our consideration then as follows. That the Council of the Municipality of North Perth, in accordance with Section 78 of the Drainage Act, proceeds with the request for improvement of the Mar Hill Municipal Drain. Further, that the Council of the Municipality of North Perth appoints Spreet Associates to investigate the possible improvements to the Mar Hill Municipal Drain. Can I call for a mover? Councillor Johnston, thank you. And our seconder will be Councillor Anstead. Will you second that? Yes, I would second that. Thank, Thank you. you. 
So we have mover and seconder. Any questions, discussion, or debate about this one? Seeing none, let's have that vote. And that is carried. Thank you. Uh, moving forward to item 5.7.3. This one invites council to proceed with the request for the improvement of the Macintosh Municipal Drain under Section 78 of the Drainage Act and to appoint an engineer. Again, Mr. Richardson is still with us. And um, I have, a, I have, he's available for questions. Anyone have questions about this report? Sort of polite smiles around the table. Uh, okay. I have a resolution then for our consideration that the Council of Municipality of North Perth, in accordance with Section 78 of the Drainage Act, proceeds with the request for improvement of the Macintosh Municipal Drain and further that the Council of the Municipality of North Perth appoints Spreet Associates to investigate the possible improvements to the Macintosh Municipal Drain. Can I call for a mover? Councillor Norton, thank you. And our seconder will be Councillor Blasek. Thank you. Any discussion or debate on this one? Seeing none, let's have that vote. And that is carried. And I'm, I'm feeling very much that sort of song, second verse, same as the first, the Henry VIII song. And, and um, Mr. Richardson, I strongly suggest you learn how to sing that song because the next time when there are four reports of similar nature to council, we're going to ask you to sing it. All right, uh, so we have item 5.7.4. This one invites council to proceed with the request for approval of the Herald Good Municipal Drain under Section 78 of the Drainage Act and to appoint an engineer. Um, again, Mr. Richardson is available to us if we have questions or comments about this one. Anyone? Councillor Johnston. Thank you. Uh, just a question about this. This drain is getting pretty close to that. Well, it's involved in that Macomb Developments land right at its uh, eastern tip. I just want to make sure that none of this water is going to be coming into, like, the northeast plan. Okay, yeah. Does that make uh, sense, Scott? Three, like, it all goes it all goes north and, and west? There is, there's, sorry, through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, yes, Mr. Johnson, the, there's a, a little bit of watershed that is on the south side. I think just from speaking with the engineers here, preliminary, anything that's on that south side uh, of line 87 probably will go to um, okay. towards the um, Moore property to be captured maybe by a retention pond in the future. This one's basically more just for the farmlands to the north um, and a new crossing, as you can see, through the railway property and, and across Highway 23. Okay, I just wanted to make sure that we capture that. Yep. In that, I know we just did a front-ending agreement with that Macom development, so just so it's captured in there. But I, yes, I know Absolutely. that land that land needs better drainage in there. Awesome. Great. Thank you. Anyone else with questions <clears throat> or comments? All right. Let's. The resolution is as follows: The Council of Municipality of North Perth, in accordance with Section 78 of the Drainage Act proceeds with the request for improvement of the Harold Good Municipal Drain. Further, that the Council of the Municipality of North Perth appoints GM Blue Plan to investigate the possible improvements to the Harold Good Municipal Drain. Can I call for a mover on this one? Councillor Johnston, thank you. And seconded by Councillor Duncan. Great. Any discussion or debate on this one? Seeing none, let's have that vote. Thank you, and that's carried. Mr. Richardson, you're singing for your supper next time. <clears throat> All right. Uh, let's move forward then to item 5.8, reports from the Development and Protective Services Department. As item 5.8.1, Council is presented with an update on status of the development of the next official plan for the County of Perth. County of Perth uh, Manager of Planning, Sally McMullen, is with us to touch on this report and answer questions. Uh, welcome, Ms. McMullen. Thank you, Mayor Kaysenberg, and good evening, members of Council, those in person and uh, also online there. Just make sure I remember how to work this before we... There we go. Okay. All right, so tonight I'm bringing you an update on the official plan project. Um, I'll 
going to talk tonight a little bit about the background on this project, the policy text and the first draft of the OP, along with mapping, the two pieces that make up the document itself. We're going to talk about growth planning a little bit and where that's at, as well as the natural environment consultation that's been underway since roughly end of September, early October, and the committees and stakeholder focus groups that are going to be starting their work very shortly. And we'll talk about next steps. All right, so the um, image that you see on the screen is what's on the website currently. It has looked like this for some time. Um, we've been in phase three for, for quite a while. The new official plan has been under development in various ways since 2018. And there's a consultant working with us on this project, and that's WSP. And they did a public consultation in 2018 and 2019 which uh, garnered information from the public on what they would like to see in the official plan, things that were um, of concern, of interest at that time. And those um, were put together with uh, various background documents uh, to come up with the first round of the text. And county staff, uh, since that time, since early 2020, have produced all the mapping and done the project management, as well as education and consultation with uh, council, the various ministries that are involved in uh, regulating different land uses, and uh, the public. Phase three, the one that uh, I identified that we're in now, has four parts to it, essentially. Uh, one is the um, editing and drafting of the policy text, and uh, we have recently reviewed that um, and tried to make it sound like it's a document about Perth, making it feel um, more, more personal, perhaps, is a good term to put, um, and also trying to make sure that it has readability. We want people in the community to be able to pick up the document and, and read through it and be able to understand what it is saying about our community. So we have uh, concluded those types of reviews as well as uh, updates very recently um, to make sure that the text is in alignment with Bill 23 and Bill 109 changes that were brought forward in 2022. And so WSP now has the draft back um, with our sort of localized edits, and they're going through it um, sort of one final time before we start uh, sharing it with the various committees. And staff um, at the county, um, this is a team effort. We work quite closely with the GIS department and the communications department, and we have a weekly um, meeting with uh, the project team to make sure certain uh, fronts, we have various fronts moving at any one time on this project, so we get together to make sure all of those things still have momentum each week. And one of the things we've been working on quite extensively with GIS is the mapping for the new official plan. So um, we have created, if you're familiar with the official plan and have spent some time in that document, you'll know that the land use designations are all in generally what's called Schedule A or Schedule B maps. And those show you every property in the county and what the land use designation or designations are on them. So we have um, gone through and sort of rebuilt the uh, data layers that make up that map. Um, and we have also cross-referenced them with various um, pieces of information that we get from uh, ministries such as aggregate, uh, licensed aggregate pits, and made sure that all of our areas are up to date on the map. And we have also um, done a lot of double checking of special policies. So this official plan that we have today um, has over 200 amendments. Um, it has a number of fringe areas in the, in the official plan, and we've gone through each of those properties individually. Some of them have been developed and we're looking to put actual, um, well, designations on those that reflect the current use rather than sort of the more um, broader category of fringe. And we have also um, decided to make the uh, floodplains a overlay, so a piece of information that is referred to in the official plan, but not a designation itself. 
So we went through there and gave a designation to every property that would have been otherwise underneath that layer of floodplain. And the two pieces that are currently underway, um, now that the text and the mapping are very close to finished, is, um, is preparing that growth plan. So back in October of 2022, um, we received an update from an additional consultant that works on this, and those are the economists over at Watson & Associates. They help us project our growth that we anticipate in a 25-year period. And then from that, they also received um, an inventory of vacant lands, so lands that are very available for development from our department, and that was through work with the building departments in each of the lower tiers. And they have now produced um, both the report in October showing us our projected growth, and that report can be found on, I believe it's October 20th, um, County Council meeting agenda and minutes. And also more recently, staff have received the land needs assessment. So they take our growth, they take our inventory, and then they tell us how much land we would need to add um, to our designations for employment and for residential growth. And so we are working with that report in a draft form. We still have some questions about the, uh, the memo itself, and we are using it to prepare a proposed growth plan. So which properties would in fact um, be proposed for those for growth in those two categories. And uh, County Council, once that memo is um, finalized here in the next uh, few weeks probably, will receive that memo as well. And then those two memos will go together to produce a new comprehensive review report. If you'll recall, in 2020, uh, the county published a comprehensive review um, with similar information about growth projections and land needs, and it has been updated over the last year. So those new, a new report is forthcoming. So that's the uh, fourth box there, and then the first box is in engaging the committees. So this project has four committees. Uh, steering committee, which is made up your, of your mayors and CAOs, and um, a technical committee, which is made up of various subject matter experts, largely um, ministry staff and uh, conservation authority staff and uh, they review sort of individual pieces of the plan and the proposed policies whatever may fall into their specialty or subject area expertise we have a uh, stakeholder group and that is made up of folks um, from the community at large representing different um, interests and we also are going to um, get in um, some partnership with the county's housing committee and review certain parts of the policies with with that group as well to garner feedback on growth and housing and neighborhood policies as well so those are the four committees and that's represented in the first box there on this slide so those are the four pieces that uh, we've been working on over the last couple of years and um, more recently getting prepared for those technical committee uh, sorry, uh, committee work and having them review the first draft of the OP. And then once those committees have provided feedback to us on the first draft, then we would revise and make edits and then uh, present that edited document to County Council. And at that point, we hope to be ready for public consultation. So I've talked about um, the updates already um, that we made to the text um, just on the last slide there. As I said, um, various updates to make it feel like very much a birth document and legislative updates. The mapping, as I said, we've reviewed all the special policies, cross-reference with the aggregate um, information from the ministry. And uh, one of the things that we've done is gone to a local consultant to uh, calculate a minimum distance separation for all livestock facilities within one and a half kilometers of our service settlement areas within the county. That will help us to an analyze and consider agricultural impacts as we look for those areas that we might uh, propose for growth. And we wanted those MDS circles on the map to be quite accurate. And so the consultant uh, did garner information direct from the livestock producers in these areas. 
So we've been able to plot that on a map and, and very much help with the growth plan. The next um, priorities then for mapping, specifically the GIS tasks um, that we work together on, will be uh, materials for the public engagement and for the committees to have visual aids in helping to understand this first draft. And also um, the extensive work that they've done on the natural environment mapping. As we consult with the public and refine that map through that consultation pro pro process, we are updating the map in batches. So the growth plan. As I said, uh, projections of our growth uh, were brought to council in October of 2022. And we recently received a memo on uh, what land we need, how many hectares, for instance, do we need? What are the disparities or um, deficits or surpluses in each area of the county and how this is the information that goes in to help us figure out where to make uh, proposed growth. And as I said, we're reviewing that document with Watsons. I recently, uh, last week, met with MMAH and brought um, not the memo to their attention, but as I'm using the memo to create the growth plan, I wanted to make sure that the things that we would be proposing to do in there wouldn't um, cause them any concern so that we could know now if there are any. And we had quite a good meeting, and I think that the direction that we're going with the proposed growth plan seems to... Um, not cause any concern and hopefully that will create efficiencies when we go to get this plan approved at the province. And then uh, the final report from Watson then a uh, new comprehensive review is anticipated uh, yet this spring. So some of you may be um, familiar with the natural environment consultation that's ongoing. We started as I said in October and this is a proposed mapping that updates the natural environment designation in the official plan. The mapping is uh, fairly outdated and nature is certainly not static, so it does change over time. And this mapping that we have now uh, was produced through a modeling exercise. And uh, what we did is we took the model, we cross-referenced it with the current designation, and then we created maps that show uh, what we propose to add to this particular designation, what changes in the landscape have occurred, what would be removed, and what stays the same. And then we were able from that to develop a map that um, identified 2,700 landowners roughly, where there would be um, an amount of land uh, on their property that would be added to this designation, so it probably changing from uh, in some urban areas from perhaps residential and in uh, the agricultural areas from agricultural areas to um, natural environment areas. And these are areas that would have permanent vegetation on them. So what we wanted to do was send the maps out to those landowners who know these properties best and get them to help us ground truth them in effect so that um, we could refine the map before it becomes a designation. And we've heard from over 350 of those folks that received letters, and we've tracked their comments um, and their likes and dislikes about the policy. We've answered many of their questions about what does a natural environment designation mean? What will it, um, what regulation or changes does that uh, mean for them as a landowner? And uh, 135 of those have requested site visits. So that's where Stephanie and I will visit their property, answer any questions they have. We'll do a visual. Um, if they are, for instance, saying that the map shows an area on their property that really isn't permanently vegetated, then we can simply go check it out. It's a, it's a fairly easy yes, no question, and we can refine the map from there. We've had 20 of these site visits, and they've all been very productive. Stephanie and I have learned a lot from the landowners about their interest and their questions and also they have offered really interesting feedback and we've had really interesting conversations. So there are a few folks that are not um, interested in this type of designation at all and we're also recording those so that council will be able to receive that information as well. Um, so we did about 20 as I said before the weather uh, made it more unpredictable and difficult to schedule these site visits and also it's harder to sort of see permanent vegetation when there's no leaves or some of it has uh, died down for the season. So we're going to be starting those up soon again here, probably in April. And then for those site visits where 
uh, either um, where either us or the landowner really don't have the qualifications to determine whether or not what we're seeing on the ground would meet the criteria for ecological significance and therefore be considered natural environment for uh, permanent vegetation, then we have the support of an ecologist. And we've got them on contract now to help us with those visits come spring. And that's going to be something that um, we have a budget there um, to get us roughly 100 visits, we think. Um, and they will vary in, in cost depending on the time that each one takes. So we're hoping then through these exercises to really work with landowners in refining that map. And this consultation will run concurrently with the public consultation generally on the OP once we start that up in the summer. But we knew that this one was going to take a lot of uh, time and a lot of uh, legwork to get those site visits in, and we wanted to make sure that, that we had time to get to everybody that calls. And the one-on-one -on -one consultations, as I said, have been quite valuable. So the committees, as I mentioned, we have four. Um, our proposal there is to split the official plan up into four or five theme areas to make it a little easier to digest and then to provide um, sort of one theme at a time to each committee. So um, the, I'll just refer to my notes here to give you sort of the breakdown of how we think we'll look at these themes. One of them is how we live, which would be sort of a neighborhoods discussion, how we grow, where we work, resources, which is agriculture, aggregates, and natural environment, and then development applications. So more of a technical piece on how does planning work and how does the official plan talk about that. So we're going to be starting these committees um, later this month. We want to get the steering committee together fairly soon to start talking about the growth plan with them. And we want to get the stakeholder focus group together shortly to talk about the process. What is it that they're here to do? Um, and what will our meeting schedule look like? So next steps, as I uh, covered earlier, it's to get that land needs memorandum to council and then finalize the growth plan. We're going to start preparing for and having the committee meetings over the next probably six to eight weeks. And the National Environment Public Consultation will continue. And it will also pick up fairly significantly probably in April and May. Uh, through June and probably July as well. And then public consultation we anticipate will start probably in June, late June, and carry on for roughly 12 weeks. There's some website updates that are currently prepared and we're just refining them now to put on the website. Um, this is a schematic of one of the changes that we're gonna make. Um, so reflecting back on that uh, visual that I showed you at the very beginning, we're going to replace it with this, which gives a little more detail on where we're at over the next six months, eight months. And it also shows how that natural environment ground truthing consultation piece fits in, and it stops short of the end so that we can um, incorporate all the changes and refinements to the map before the final official plan is, is put, put out. And that concludes, um, actually there's one more thing I want to say about updates to the website, and that is that on the natural environment web pages, um, I don't know if any of you have visited, but you can go there and look up pretty much any property in the county and see what the proposed changes are to the natural environment mapping. But also on that site we have a number of uh, FAQs. And so those frequently asked questions are updated on a regular basis as we talk to more folks and we start to understand what their concerns and questions are and we refine them as we go. So we've also just written um, sort of a new section for that and refine some of the answers that are currently provided there for people to get information. So those updates, this and those new FAQs are set to roll out here quite shortly. And that's, uh, that concludes the presentation on the update for the official plan. All right. Uh, thanks, Ms. McMullen. That was uh, quite remarkable in terms of scope and helping us to understand with graphical schematics that what the process is and has been, and we're grateful for the work that's um, being done. Let me turn to councillors and see if there are questions or first comments. Deputy Mayor Kellum. Yes, thank you through you, Mayor Kaysenberg, and thank you for the update, uh, Sally. Just a question regarding the, uh, there's 115 site visits left. 
Do we have a forecast on when they may be completed? That's quite a few. Yeah, um, we're able to do roughly five a day. And we were um, working together back when we did the first 20 in order to sort of um, train staff up on what we, how to answer questions, what people are likely to want to know. Um, and we've developed a, a sheet to record those meetings as well. So we're going to divide and conquer come April, and so we'll be able to get through them. It'll probably take us several weeks, probably um, a good chunk of April, all of May, and all of June, I anticipate, because we're doing other work as well. So we try to schedule a day or two days a week when we're doing them to, to get through that list. Mm -hmm. Plus, we'll be able to... We also picked some earlier that were a little more scattered, and that was because some of them we needed to access while it wasn't spring runoff because we wouldn't be able to get through to the uh, second part of the farms. And some of them were just sort of more complicated in nature. So we were more scattered before, and this round we'll be doing very tight geographies with each day. Great. Uh, Councillor Andreessen, I see your hand up. Yes, thank you. Through you, Mayor, Mayor Kaysenberg. Um, well, a very comprehensive plan and work for, for your department, and we appreciate it for sure. Um, I have a couple questions around um, uh, planning in terms of the future development and, um, and the fact that I don't think it's any surprise that we're running out of land, mm -hmm. especially in North Perth. And um, in using more land, it's going to run into um, agricultural land. Will there be any kind of um, consideration in terms of our next steps for looking at what we can do to build up mm -hmm. so that we're increasing the density but not get, you know, using as much as our farmland? Yeah, so it's, a, it's an excellent question. Um, and the official plan not only lays out those areas for future growth, um, and does that for a 25-year period. And it's been some time, really, since we've added land for growth planning to, um, to the official plan. So I can appreciate that it's going to feel like quite a slug all at once. Um, we do have a bit of catch-up to do. Um, and so the other part about uh, the official plan will be policies that have targets around intensification. So the area right now that's sort of currently built up in our serviced areas, um, that's the area that you would consider um, any more or infill to happen within there or redevelopments to happen within that sort of periphery is considered an intensification. So we will have targets in there for intensification. We'll have more specific targets for new subdivisions that are um, in the new growth areas. And it will... Um, it will rely on sort of a two-pronged approach. One, that the planners really hold the line on those types of things in reviewing applications and working with applicants. And also that, uh, that council, um, when it comes to decision-making, will be able to also sort of hold that line. So applications that come forward that don't perhaps maybe hit those targets, um, maybe you know, won't be seen as favorably in the future as we try to be more intentional about efficient land use. My, the way I've been thinking about it more often lately is it's very wise and, and um, helpful for especially the lower tiers if we plan out a 25-year horizon because when you're making investments in infrastructure, you need to know where you're going with it. And so laying out those growth areas and having your infrastructure plan really need to go hand in hand and to do that over the long term is pretty important because the investments that you make are so huge in infrastructure. Um, but what we intend to do is take longer than 25 years to grow into it. Like that would be the best case scenario is you lay out your plan for 25 years and then you work really hard to take longer than that to grow into it. Right. Mm -hmm. Secondary, if you don't mind. Um, could you help me understand more about the MDS setbacks? Mm -hmm. Are there any changes? What, I'm, what I want to know, though, around MDS is that are there changes based on the new legislation that would um, impact MDS setbacks for uh, development outside of the urban fringe? 
In the past, MDS setbacks have been very helpful to ensure that agricultural um, livestock pr producers can continue to grow. Will that still be in place for other agricultural operations um, given the new legislation? I know there's been a lot of changes, and I wondered if that will still be in place. Yeah, the new legislation doesn't change um, any of the way that you calculate MDS or the way that it's applied. Um, what we may see is more in more flexibility, perhaps, at the provincial level to um, when you're growing your sediment boundaries, like eventually we'll be able to share these maps publicly and you'll be able to see all the MDS circles around each of our service settlement areas. So Sebringville, uh, sorry, not Sebringville, um, Shakespeare, Atwood, Listowel, Mitchell, Milverton. Um, and some of those areas, once you plot those MDS, you look at some of those settlement areas and you realize there's nowhere to grow that doesn't impact a livestock operation. There's nothing. But to not grow those service settlement areas is an inefficient way to grow because that's where you can get more units per hectare on those serviced areas and where you can make the most of your uh, roads and infrastructure. So um, those areas can't really be avoided. That's where we go to ensure the intensification that we want. Um, and yet uh, there's going to be uh, livestock operations where you would grow into, like you would grow in, inside that circle. But there's no change in the way it's calculated or applied um, for individual applications. I think there may be um, some flexibility at the provincial level in approving plans that have growth areas inside a circle. And then, like, if there's variances needed to those MDSs in future for those livestock operations, then that's at the will of council as well to make those changes or to allow those variances. Okay, other questions at this point? So we have uh, Councillor Rothwell. Councillor Rothwell. Thank you, Councillor Rothwell. The floor is yours. Thank you, Mayor Todd. And uh, thank you, Sally, for your presentation. I have a couple of questions. I think you've clarified this. Uh, the uh, MDS calculations that are being done for 1.5 kilometers from uh, each, those are service settlement areas, right? So you specifically mentioned Listowel and Atwood, correct? Yes, both of those are included. So we're not looking at uh, our uh, unserviced, even our larger settlement areas like Moncton or uh, uh, Trowbridge, uh, any like uh, Gowanstown and so on. We're not looking at any of those, correct? Yeah, we're not looking at those as anticipated growth areas for the fact that they're not serviced and uh, growth in there would potentially be less dense less opportunities for density and intensification. Okay, fair enough. Um, the uh, the next question I have uh, specifically is, uh, and, and again, uh, North Perth Council had requested uh, an update uh, from the uh, County Planning Department on the updates of the uh, official plan since uh, last August, I believe. So we're certainly uh, thankful uh, to get this update. Uh, it is a crucial and important document for uh, all of our municipalities, and especially uh, uh, for us in North Perth and dealing with growth. And I, I did not see in, in the time frames here in terms of the uh, uh, opportunities for uh, the planning department to come to each member municipality and have specific conversations around the plan itself, and in particular, the growth areas that we're that you're busy working at. So wh when is that going to occur? Is that going to be during the public phase or when's that happening? Thank you. Well, actually looking back to the work plan that was set about in 2018, um, the individual tasks, uh, circling back to lower tier councils happens at the very end in that work plan. And actually what I intend to do, I think that's too late in the process to be talking to you all. So I'm going to be looking to that steering committee to give us direction on how we can coordinate ourselves to bring you information before that time. So in the work plan that was set about in 2018, it looks like um, a joint council meeting would occur after public consultation. And I'd like to, I'd like to either have something joint sooner or come to you individually and give you information as we go. So I'm hoping to coordinate with the steering committee, which is your mayors and CAOs, on how we can most effectively do that. 
Thank you very much. And Mayor Todd, if there's someone else that has a question, I'll hold on my last uh, till, till another time. Thank okay. you. Let me just check in with council. Anyone else want an opportunity to ask a question or make a comment at this point? Okay, Councillor Rothwell, round three. Uh, last uh, point, uh, and then thanks, Mayor Todd, and through you uh, to Sally. So in terms of uh, the uh, uh, natural environment study, uh, uh, we talked about the numbers, and the Deputy Mayor asked specific questions about timing and so on about the uh, uh, site visits and such. Uh, map, the maps uh, are fine for what they are, uh, but the issue is policy and have has the proposed policy actually been shared with uh, property owners uh, as, to, as opposed to simply showing a, an area that could be subject to a to the designation? Thank you. Yeah, but through you, um, we have been sharing with them verbally how the current natural environment policy works and it is proposed to stay fairly similar. So when you have natural environment designation on your property and you propose a development application, that would be lot creation, new buildings, or site alteration, then you would, um, under certain circumstances, need to evaluate your potential impact from your proposed development on that natural environment area. And that takes the form of an environmental impact study. So that's largely how the official plan works today. Um, what we would be adding is the areas um, of the map that weren't currently designated before um, and in their thickets and meadows. So those aren't currently mapped or designated. But if you came forward with an application today before we update this map and on our site visit we came to know that there was an existing woodland or a wetland um, on your property within uh, 30 meters of your proposed development, then you would be required to do that EIS today. So we use these site visits and our public consultation as opportunities to explain that to folks, that the policy itself is not that different. Um, we may look at a different number than 30 meters, maybe that's 50 meters, um, but it essentially unfolds in the same manner and the same requirement exists. So we try to give those two concepts to folks. One, that those requirements exist today. They don't apply to thickets and meadows, but they would in the future. That's what's proposed to really change. And that the new and updated mapping helps us to determine when we need to look a little closer, but we should be doing that anyway on our safe visits as well. Uh, thank you very much, and through you, Mayor Todd, just the, the last point. So of, of the uh, number of uh, uh, requested uh, site visits uh, throughout the county, how many of those are, are in North Perth? Uh, just so we're aware, I'm, I'm, I'm sure many of the councillors have received phone calls from property owners within our municipality, just <laughs> wondering, uh, and so on, and, and I can tell you I've received a number and put them right through to the county planning department. But what... What sort of number of, of uh, property owners do we have or within North Perth uh, specifically that are uh, have requested uh, the site visits and so on? Thank you. Yeah, I don't have the number of site visit required or requested in North Perth, but I can certainly give that to you. It's it's all tracked in a spreadsheet, and I can do a data sort and provide that number. Um, when asked back um, in October, I did provide some numbers about how many letters went out, um, and you could see the proportion of letters uh, that went out in each municipality in each ward. Um, and so I'll have to come back to you with that number for how many are in North Perth, and I encourage council to become familiar with the website yourselves because um, it's it's nice for you also to be able to show landowners that you know where to find information and that it's available to them. So I encourage you to um, sort of share that duty of directing folks to the information on the website and the planning department as you've done, Councillor Roswell. So thank you for that. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Thanks, Mayor Todd. Okay, anyone else with questions or comments at this point? I can't have one. Okay. 
it feels like since I've been mayor and even before my time that we've kind of had a tiger by the tail in terms of growth, that North Perth has grown uh, substantially. And in fact, against the last growth plan that was commissioned by the municipality, we seem to grow at double the projection rate. Um, over the course of this uh, official plan process, we've had, uh, I think, now three, maybe even four estimates of growth uh, coming out of uh, Watson uh, with regards to North Perth. It's, it's a few. I, I remember approving money for a few. And, um, and I guess I'm kind of interested in how next growth policy will intersect with the, the rapid changes that can happen and have been demonstrated to happen in North Perth, right? I mean, it could be that it's um, Milverton and, and Perth East that grows rapidly next. Um, we have no idea, but I guess the question is, how do we brace the next official plan with a sense of rigor so that we know when to trigger another assessment around growth and what to do about it? Yeah, that's an excellent question. So. When we do this new official plan, we'll be doing some major catch-up. And we then would find ourselves in a position where we could sort of start a new dawn of tracking, if you will. So what we would like to do is track um, not only consumption of land, but um, number of units and number of affordable units and intensification. So we'd like to um, employ some form of tracking and that would be in partnership between the building departments and the planning department Um, because then we could provide you with sort of annual updates for instance on how we're doing in hitting those targets which is pretty valuable information if you're trying to really hold the line so um, I think a really good tracking system and setting up that partnership that data is shared across um, from building permit data and also draft plan approval data, for instance, um, redevelopment applications and official plan amendments, perhaps, that all that information is sort of known in both the upper and the lower tier at all times, and then we can report on it on a regular basis. Um, So that's the goal. And then you don't have to wait quite so long to, like we shouldn't be waiting so long to update our official plan each time. This particular time has been challenging because of the time that has passed since the last real um, deep dive and update. Um, And also the rapid growth that we've um, experienced. And also the changes that have happened over the last three or four years as this project has unfolded, I think that's fairly unprecedented to have the kind of impacts that we've seen to development pressures and um, and that projected growth. But um, And also at the same time when uh, land hasn't been planned out for a 25-year horizon and folks aren't sure where to go next. So once we're at that stage where there's a clear plan for where to go for the long term again, it'll be a lot nicer environment to work in and to try and figure out what to do next. Just supplementary to that then, um, there's been sort of an implication throughout this process that we may in fact get into a routine of evaluating the official plan and and perhaps adjusting it moving forward at a five-year interval. You know, maybe it's different than that, but that's what I was given to sort of generally understand. that There was an ambition, at least, towards looking at it again in five years. Um, Can you say that that you believe that um, the county is bringing forward the resources to afford and and cost projects every five years, at least for the first five-year review, um, and, and, you know, wisely planning that at this point? And the first review after a new official plan, because this isn't technically an update, it's a new plan. The first review after a new plan is meant to be 10 years, and then five years thereafter. That doesn't stop us from making adjustments through an an internally initiated official plan amendment at the five-year period. Um, With the question around resources, um, sort of looking at the 30,000-foot view, we have staff right now working on the official plan. Um, one of us is a contract, um, and one of us is supposed to be managing and doing other things as well. So, I, yeah, it's tight, and we're going to flip from that into the zoning bylaw update to match the new official plan. So, I mean, one could 
uh, look and say that those hours can shift into zoning and then back into the OP. Um, but I think we probably in the long term would find that we need more people if development review and the development review pressures continue to be as strong as they are today. Okay, I'll ask one more then, um, just for the, the insight of all of us uh, with regards to um, a new zoning bylaw. What kind of timeline will that be on after the official plan is approved? CAO Snell is smirking in the background, actually, so I'm not sure what that tells us. But uh... Again, that's going to be another fairly big undertaking because it's been a while. Um, we recently got all the consolidations caught up, and we're going to be shortly bringing you um, – a couple of housekeeping amendments that will certainly help in specific designations. But um, it's it's going to be a fairly large undertaking. I suspect that's a uh, one- to two-year project if resources are available. Uh, thank you for that. Um, colleagues, any other questions emerge uh, from this? Anything remotely... Uh... Ms. Carter? Okay. Uh, so I have um, a resolution then for our consideration as follows. The Council receives the update new official plan project report for information. Can I call for mover? Councillor Richardson, thank you. And Councillor Duncan will be our seconder. Any discussion or debate? Here's hoping you scribe is still uh, alive and well. Uh, let's have that vote. And that is carried. Ms. McMullen, thank you. Thank your staff for all the work that's happening as well. All right. Um, that allows us to uh, skip forward a, a, a little bit here. We're at item six on our agenda now. Uh, for item 6.1, councillors, are there any reports you'd like to ask of staff or of our committees? I'm not seeing indication of that. Anything remotely? Okay, thank you. Uh, then let's move to item seven. We have no additional items of correspondence uh, beyond the stuff that we saw in our uh, consent agenda to uh, share or to act on. Uh, we also, under item eight, have no additional bylaws for deliberation tonight. That brings us to item nine on our agenda. Are there any councillors wishing leave to give notice of motion? Not seeing anything there, so let's move to item 10 on our agenda. For item 10.1, are there any announcements that would be of benefit to our community or that reflect well on North Perth at this time? And, of course, those connected remotely uh, should draw the attention of the uh, clerk to uh, uh, this. But uh, let's start with Councillor Richardson. And thank you through you, my case, Berg. I'd just like to wish all the citizens of North Perth and everyone happy Patty Fest. We're at that time of year again. Uh, Shamrocks and a hint of green by Councillor Blazak they have there, and I can oh, I can even see the shamrocks and everything there. I'd just like to wish everyone. It's always it's been a big tradition in uh, North Perth uh, ever since 1977. It's been around for an awful long time, so I'd just like to wish and do a great job of promoting that. So happy Patty Fest, everyone! Thank you. Agreed. Anyone else with an announcement uh, this evening? All right, that brings us to agenda item number 11. Uh, we have one matter to consider in a closed session a meeting of council. I have a resolution for me to enable that as follows. Uh, that the Council of the Municipality of North Perth proceeds in camera at 8.14 p.m. to address a matter pertaining to a proposed or pending acquisition or disposition of land by the municipality or local board Regarding property described as Plan 151 LTS 178384 Part 85 East Side Argyle Lots 8283 PT 84 uh, West Side Wallace subject to Row 155 Inkerman, can I call for a mover on that one? Councillor Blazek, thank you. Councillor Nordum will be our seconder. Any discussion or debate on this one? Seeing none, let's have that vote. And that is carried. That means open council is adjourned. Well, we're getting a YouTube feed there. That's kind of odd. All right. Um, so those 
who've been invited to stay I'm, <laughs> should stay. Those who have not been invited to stay should exit, and we will change our audiovisual setup so that uh, we can move in camera.
Okay. I guess I should speak to see whether you're going to get some audio. <clears throat> Great. It's funny, those who watch uh, council meetings uh, from the archive video, they encounter all kinds of strange comments uh, related to our control of the audiovisual for the meeting. All right, um, uh, this uh, meeting is reconvened in open session, and um, I, I will turn our attention to item 12 on the agenda. I can confirm that Council did discuss the matter that was identified in our enabling resolution for a closed session meeting of Council and did give staff direction pertaining to this matter, the essence of which will remain confidential at this time for the reasons that we explained in our enabling resolution. Council, as a mandated good practice, acts near the end of its meeting agenda to confirm all of its actions and business of its meeting through what is called the confirmatory bylaw. For item 13.1, I have a draft of the confirmatory bylaw number 27-2023, which reads as follows. The bylaw number 27-2023 being a bylaw to confirm generally previous actions of the Council of the Municipality of North Perth be introduced, read, and considered read a first, second, and third time, and be finally passed and said bylaw be signed by the Mayor and the Clerk and sealed with the seal of the Corporation. Can I call for a mover? Thank you, Councillor Blazek and Councillor Nurem will be our seconder. Any discussion or debate? Seeing none, let's have that vote. Yeah. So we've lost some e-scribe connectivity. Councillor Andreessen's recording a manual vote in favor. Are we missing one other? And that is carried. All right. Uh, thank you, councillors. That means we've completed the deliberation and taken action on the business that did come before us tonight. It is thus appropriate for us to consider adjournment. And I have a resolution to that effect that we will uh, turn to our remote uh, councillors for uh, for and their uh, support, perhaps. Um, so the, the resolution as follows. The council meeting adjourns at 8.51 p.m., to meet again for general council business on Monday, March 20th, 2023 at 7 p.m. Moved by Councillor Rothwell. He's nodding his head. Yes. Showing his hand. Seconded by Councillor Anstead. Yes. Thank you. And uh, that's not a debatable motion, so let's have that vote. And that is carried. Thank you. Uh, our next regular council meeting is Monday, March 20th, 2023. Until that date, this meeting is adjourned. Good night, everyone.